invention, the product of innovation. As a company that is founded on the sleeves of innovation and design, it is refreshing to see the fruits of someone else's labor yield them much success. This past week, we got to sit down with Matt with Sancher Performance Development and discuss his revolutionary clean slate approach to a problem that has plagued this industry for many years. We hope you enjoy. Matt, uh, one of the first things I want to do is introduce you to people and kind of talk about who Matt is and about your company. So. If you don't mind, tell me just a little bit. Um, your Matt, last name San. Sancher. Sancher. And uh, tell me about your company and, and what you do. So I'm Sancher Performance Development. I'm a mechanical engineer. I've worked at uh, Lee Bear Mining Equipment and Steel Inc. in the past. Uh, now I've got my own business rolling and got a couple transmission components that I've had in development for the past two years. I've had some really good success with them in the recent months. Been doing a lot of testing and things have been going going really well. Probably for me the most intriguing thing about you, just talking to you and last time that we got to talk was you had a really neat project that you got to do when, if I'm not mistaken, did you intern at Steel? I did. Chainsaw? When yep. Is this when you were in college? It was my, uh, yeah, my senior year in college and, and after I graduated I worked there for a while. You designed a chainsaw to run off a jet motor, is that correct? Yep, it was a jet turbine engine. It was a really unique project. Uh, it was obviously, it was a one-off. It was never intended to be a, a production item. It was a, a going away present for our president at the time. Probably the cost wasn't as effective, mm. I wouldn't think. It was an expensive one-off for sure, but it was more powerful, it was lighter, it was electric start, it was fully functioning. So Matt, it, some point after we move on from jet powered chainsaws there's always been this yearning something deep inside of you with the diesel is is that correct kind of had the addiction since since high school um i've been messing with them for the past uh 10 years or so and it's been a very evolving competitive sport that's uh kind of coming to new levels uh in the in the most recent years and uh, that's kind of what's what's driven me to to go down the path of developing some some much needed components for the uh, drive trains behind some of these some of these units. One of the things that we've been testing with you is this new shaft that you've designed in stator support. Tell us a little bit about the design process, just some bullet points that you saw as a mechanical engineer. The high stress concentrations that I found were at the cross drilled holes and ceiling ring grooves. That section either needed to get so, so large that it interfered with the functionality of the stator support um, or the features needed to be eliminated. One of these key areas is oil flow. Tell me a little bit about what you did with the oil flow. Instead of having the fluid flow to the converter through the cross drilled holes in the center of the shaft, it flows to the converter on the outside of the shaft inside of the stator tube. And it returns to the transmission on the outside of the stator tube inside of the impeller hub. So the fluid passages have essentially been shifted outward. By doing that, we able to eliminate the cross drilled holes and ceiling ring grooves, which was a major area of concern that couldn't really be improved without dramatically increasing the size of that area. We know in the Chrysler world with the 47s and 48s, when you combine relatively high turbine slip in conjunction with a lot of torque, one of the issues you have is getting the balance oil off the back side of a piston. Even though you can compress it as much as you want, we know that you can't compress fluid. That's a hydraulic principle. Okay. So getting that oil off the back side of the piston now, that area is actually increased. Am, am I correct in understanding that? The flow passages that allow the fluid to discharge from the back side of the apply piston are completely unrestricted now. Um, much less restricted than the fluid passages downstream in the valve body and, and whatnot. So the time for lockup to apply is much quicker than it was prior, especially in comparison to current aftermarket uh, solutions that have increased the restriction throughout the input shaft itself. Correct. So your time from lockup being applied to 
zero relative motion between the ply piston and frictions is dramatically decreased and slippage doesn't occur. Um, every, time slip, every time slippage occurs, when there goes to lockup, you have a slight amount of glazing and decreased converter. Which is one of the, the reasons we've seen this relative move within the industry of these bolt together converters on the Chrysler product is, you know, you need that, you have that need to change those clutches when you have a high turbine slip. Tell me a little bit, when you redesigned that oil flow, what was your primary concern? To eliminate the restrictions and allow for near immediate lockup um, and minimize the, the slippage that, that occurs at that moment of lockup being applied, which obviously you always have some amount of slippage, but by minimizing that, you greatly increase the life of the, of the frictions themselves. That's somewhat of a dual prong approach, and we know that that balance hole is there to keep the applying piston from centrifugally applying. So the faster that we can evacuate that fluid out, in a sense, the faster our apply is gonna be. When lockup is unapplied, your charge pressure is flowing behind the apply piston and keeping it unapplied. As soon as you take that supply pressure, apply pressure away, pressure on the other side applies and the fluid on the back side has to be discharged. Evacuated. It's a small amount, but with multi-friction uh, clutch backs, you have an even greater uh, amount of, of clearance that, and in turn, amount of fluid that has to be discharged. And it takes time to discharge that fluid. Obviously, any restrictions downstream increases the time for lockup and the amount of slippage that occurs. Matt, you've obviously addressed the flow control issues with the stator. What we keep talking about and seeing is about the size of the shaft. Now, in comparison to the one that you designed versus the factory, what is the actual dimensional size difference in diameter? So it's an inch and three sixteenths major diameter, 37 spline. Um, and being that it's a fine spline, the minor diameter is nearly 200 thousandths larger than the minor diameter of the relatively coarse spline factory shaft. What is the spline angle? If I'm not mistaken, didn't you change or deviate from the factory spline angle of that shaft? It is. It's a 45 degree pressure angle. Uh, reduces the shear stress on the spline teeth themselves. Now in the factory, I believe a 30 degree? It's a 30 degree, that's correct. Now, why would you go from a 30 to a 45 degree angle? It decreases the shear stress on the spline teeth themselves. Uh, directs them, directs the stress, more of a compressive stress, into the shaft itself. Matt, there's this crazy misconception in the industry that a fine spline shaft is gonna have less torque capacity than say a coarse spline, but to the educated mind, that couldn't be further from the truth. Explain that a little bit to us. By having a fine spline, you've increased the minor diameter of the spline. So obviously if the spline's coarser, your splines are cut deeper, and if you were to look at a cross section of that spline, your minimal cross section is gonna be smaller. So in turn, you're gonna have even higher stress concentration at those, at those splines. So the greater diameter you can keep in your minor diameter, the less stress that spline sees, the greater fatigue life it's gonna have. The first you know, question everybody's gonna have, what's, what's the material made of in the shaft? Is it Vascomax, is it 300M, is it Aeromat? It's a proprietary alloy, quench and tempered steel, ultra high strength uh, material, vacuum arc melted, and the heat treat is really, that's what really sets it apart. The next point that I wanna talk about is that this larger, finer spline shaft is completely solid. The reason for doing so is we're able to eliminate a very high stress concentration region at your cross drilled holes and ceiling ring grooves. What does that do with like torsional fatigue when you have a solid shaft? By eliminating those features, you've greatly increased the fatigue life of the shaft. Because you don't have the cross drilled holes and ceiling ring grooves at the outer most diameter of the material where the stress is the, is the greatest, yeah. that's, that's the key thing. The material in the core of the shaft doesn't make a difference. It's removing those features from the outside diameter where your stress is the highest on any shaft. In, in speaking of torsional fatigue, you know we get these calls all the time 
not racing my truck, this shaft shouldn't break, but in fact, the fatigue break can come from guys that are just normal use, heavy towing and hauling, is that correct? The shaft sees fatigue in everyday applications. Um, just, just during rotation, uh, you have a rotating mass, you have all your internal com converter components on, hanging on the end of the shaft, so you have rotational bending loads uh, on, the, on, the, on the shaft itself. Um, so that's where you get your high cycle fatigue. Um, and in turn, you have crack propagation and, and fatigue failure at, at your high stress concentration. Uh, by increasing the overall length of the shaft, it allows it to be fully supported by the bearing and the front cover of the torque converter. And the increased length allows it to deflect a greater amount over the full length of the shaft. So more like a torsion bar effect, so it, to say. It does, it acts, it acts like a, a torsional damper. Now, there's another key feature here with it being longer. I believe this is, the nipple's gone now. And I believe that we're touching the back of the converter supported on that back cross bearing. That's correct. Uh, the small nipple or boss that was on the, originally on the end of the shaft mm -hmm. was the sealing feature. In the factory condition, there's a, a seal inside the torque converter that, that seals on the end of the shaft by having the solid shaft design, you no longer have that location for sealing. Uh, you have a seal on the stator tube. We were actually doing some testing at our spring shakedown back about a month ago in March. We had your setup in Montana Cherry's truck with our converter and we beat on it as you saw. Any anxiety on your behalf watching him spray it over and over and over and over. He must have had 15 or 20 passes. I was definitely excited to see him putting a hurting on the, on the setup, um, but realistically that's what it was intended for. You're gonna have a lot of people calling and asking about this new shaft, which will be on sale at Suncoast with limited supply, of course, in, in the beginning. But one of the things that's gonna scare a lot of builders is they're afraid that I've gotta do some custom machining to the pump or something of that nature. This is in fact, with our torque converter, this is a true drop-in replacement of both the stator and the input shaft. Am I correct in assuming that? That is correct. Uh, majority of the required supporting components are taken care of in the torque converter. Um, on the transmission side, it assembles just like a just like an OEM mm -hmm. input shaft. Uh, your stator support still fits through the factory pump gear just as it normally would, uh, even with the larger diameter spline on, mm -hmm. the, on the stator tube. Um, relief cuts to allow it to pass through the pump gear. Uh, everything else is exactly the same. Um, I say exactly the same. The assembly process is exactly the same. Uh, builders don't have to really learn anything, anything new. Yeah, the, the main key component where the production becomes somewhat custom is going to be in the converter manufacturing process, which we're going to take care of that for the customer. Yeah, there, there, there's some supporting converter components that are required that, that we have available. This didn't happen to just come to market by chance or without any testing. You've actually done some fatigue testing and some torsional stress testing. Tell me a little bit about that. That's correct. Obviously during the design iterations, there was a lot of uh, FEA analysis done on the computer. Um, but after all that was completed to verify uh, everything was uh, correlated with the results we were expecting, uh, we've done extensive fatigue testing on a hydraulic torsion uh, fatigue tester. I've loaded the shaft at over 4,000 foot pounds of 4,000 foot pounds. I've had no failures at all, no spline deformation, no nothing. Um, proven out that the removal of the high stress concentrations such as the ceiling ring grooves and cross shield holes um, does, has indeed increased the fatigue life dramatically. Um, had great, great results thus far. Yeah, that's amazing. We're so pleased to be able to work with you on this. You know, people are gonna see this video and they're gonna call and they're gonna want some shafts, but my understanding we have a little bit of limited production at this particular point. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, there was uh, obviously initial, an initial manufacturing run completed. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of shafts out there running, uh, getting good data back, and we're in the process of uh, completing the next manufacturing uh, 
batch. So we'll have plenty of plenty of product available in the in the soon soon to come. Uh, Matt, it's been it's been quite the event getting you here today, and we appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to come down here and sit with us and talk with us. If it makes you feel any better, I know you're only here for 24 hours, but I know the weather's much better here than where you're at. It has been. It has been nice. It was uh, it was a feat getting here. Charlotte had some had some nasty weather, so. Yeah, and we've been plagued today with you know just guys working in the shop and background noises, and we're in an actual working environment that we've tried to make into a studio for you today, and uh, we just appreciate you taking time out.